On the 25th of December 1989, the former dictator of Romania, Nicolae Ceausescu, and his wife Elena were led out to the side of a military base near to Bucharest, and they were both stood opposite a firing squad. The executioners aimed their rifles at the former ruling couple. They then littered their bodies with what some have claimed to have been around 100 bullets. It was all over so quickly that the cameras struggled to pick up the proceedings. There had been a revolution inside of Romania, and things had been very tense for some time, and the Ceausescus were considered despotic dictators, who even ordered the armed forces to fire at their own civilians, their own people. Elena was referred to as the mother of the nation, and she spent her decades in power, meeting important world leaders, but she was a vicious woman with a sharp tongue, who many believed deserved her end and demise. Join us today as we look at the execution of the ruthless female Romanian dictator, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Elena Ceausescu was born on the 7th of January 1916, and no one would have imagined what she would become one day, as she was born into a peasant family in what was once known as the region of Wallachia. Her father was a farmer, but Elena was not the most well-educated girl, and after school she worked in Bucharest as a lab assistant, and she worked inside of a factory. It was inside this job that she began to develop an interest in politics, and she then became a member of the Romanian Communist Party in 1939, and whilst part of the Bucharest group, she met a 21-year-old man named Nicolae Ceausescu. The couple fell in love, but Nicolae would later believe that he never looked at another woman following his first meeting with Elena. However, their relationship was rocky, as he was locked up in prison a number of times, but the couple did get married on the 23rd of December 1947. Following the communist seizure of power in Romania, Elena then got a job as a secretary inside of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but her husband was a senior ranking member of the party, and he became the general secretary, and in this role Elena kept her husband company as he went on visits to other countries and diplomatic missions. She went with him to China in 1971, she was a supporter of Chairman Mao's wife, and she wanted to be like her. But then Elena became a member of the Central Commission on Social Economic Forecasting, and she was then elected to being a full member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party. She had a number of different roles inside of the government. But then as the years went on, Elena Ceausescu began to rise to become the second most powerful person inside of Romania, after her husband, and she was a woman who was idolised by many other women across the land. She was seen as the mother of the nation, and Elena Ceausescu was not the most endearing woman. She was very vain, and was worried about how she looked in media appearances, and she was worried about her nose, to the point where she controlled photographs of her, to show her not in profile. She was more bothered about her appearance at times, than her people. However, despite the power and rise of the Ceausescus, they would have a huge crash and a huge fall from grace, that led to their execution. In the 1980s, there was a lot of tension within different sections of Romanian society and was directed towards a dictator and his wife. On the 16th of December 1989, the Hungarian minority inside the city of Timisora had a protest regarding the attempts by Ceausescu's leadership and government to evict and deport a Hungarian priest named Laszlo Tokes. The government claimed he was inciting hatred and whipping up for a roar, and they wanted him out. However, that evening the protest spread to a huge extent, and soon the root cause of the protest was forgotten, and the target of the uprising was the Ceausescus. Many protesters took to the streets, and they tried to set fire to buildings, and the police would fire tear gas and use their water cannons on the rebels. The police attacked and beat up violently some of those protesting, and the group then began to march around the city, but they were met by members of the military. Things continued the following day, and protests resumed, and the protesters broke into the Communist District Committee building, and they destroyed much of the administrative equipment. But then the full-blown army was sent in by the Ceausescus to bring things to an end, and they sent in the tanks. There was shooting heard from Liberty Square around the city, and a lot of heavy equipment was used against the protesters. It was as if civil war was breaking out on the streets of Romania, and Nikolai then left the country to go and do government business with Iran, and he left Elena to deal with the revolution. She was not in the mood to negotiate, and martial law was declared, and she brought in a curfew. But the protesters refused to conform, 
and because of this, the military fired at them, and some were killed. Elena Ceausescu then decided to send other government officials in to deal with the protests, but these were more lenient. They even agreed to free some of the protesters who had been arrested. On the 20th of December, Elena's husband returned from Iran, and he then made an ill-fated speech, which went terribly wrong. Many of the crowd who witnessed it, around 100,000 people, had been government plants and stooges brought in to make the Ceausescus seem more popular. But he was out of touch, as was Elena, and they did not seem to want to deal with the demands of the crowd. Ceausescu continued to speak, but the crowd jeered him, then fireworks and gunshots were heard, and the crowd tried to disperse as they heard that security forces had been shooting at those who were protesting, as a full-blown revolution was now in full swing. The speech of Nikolai Ceausescu, with Elena stood by his side, was shown around the nation and the world, as was the fact they were shown retreating and looking shell-shocked, and they were bundled back into the government building. It was not a good look for the couple who were seen cowering, but the crowd then began to become more riotous, and there were chants aimed at the Ceausescus, claiming they were criminals who deserved to be put to death. But many more people joined in, and special forces were sent in, and the crowd was shot at again by the army. There were bodies in the streets and many casualties, and some were beaten to death and were even stabbed by pro-government forces. Some protesters were even ran over, as an armoured personnel carrier was driven at speed at the crowd, and the police continued to brutalise and batter anyone they saw. There was a lot more shooting throughout the night. But for Elena Ceausescu, she remained loyal to her husband, and she must have known that things were coming to a sharp end for her and her husband. She was also a big target for the unrest, and there was a lot of anger directed specifically towards her. Their economic policies had caused ruin inside of the country, and the people were forcing change. But in the morning of the 22nd of December, the Ceausescus then made the decision to wait a few hours to try and escape, and this would be a fateful decision. At 7am, Elena specifically realised that there were now large groups of others heading to Bucharest to join in with the revolution, and despite fleeting attempts to curb the outrage, such as banning large groups, there were dozens of thousands inside of Bucharest. But the Ceausescus were turning on their own, as at 9.30am, the defence minister it's believed was executed on Nikolai's orders, as he was refusing to shoot at the protesters. But then Elena and her husband tried to flee and tried to get to the roof of the building they were on to escape. But at the same time the protesters had broken into the building, they were quickly scaling the floors, and as the Ceausescus made their way over towards a helicopter that was there to rescue them and get out of the city, the protesters got onto the roof, and they were metres away from Elena and Nikolai Ceausescu. The pilot of the helicopter saw the protesters coming, and he quickly got the dictator and his wife out, but the couple were white with fear, and the pilot claimed that there wasn't enough space, Elena Ceausescu and I were squeezed in between the chairs and the doors. We were only supposed to carry four passengers, we had six. The pilot then dropped the couple with a few bodyguards in Snagov, as he claimed a revolution had erupted and there was nothing more he could do. Shortly after this, the Ceausescus were arrested after trying to take cars to get out of the region, and they were then brought to the Targovist garrison military compound. They were briefly held under arrest before a trial could be assembled. This occurred very quickly, and the trial of Elena Ceausescu and her dictator husband lasted just an hour, and they were not allowed proper legal representation. Elena tried her best to defend herself, but she knew what was going to happen, and she would be vicious with her words to the courtroom and the mock trial. The couple were accused of the genocide of 60,000 people and in organising armed forces to shoot against civilians. They were also accused of destroying public property and damaging buildings, as well as bringing the Romanian economy to its knees. The Ceausescus were found guilty of all the charges, and they were then sentenced to death. There was no appeal, and the Ceausescus believed that the court was illegal, that their death sentence was not justified or legally standing. Elena Ceausescu was to be executed alongside her husband by a firing squad, being shot days after the Romanian Christmas Revolution had broken out. It was a quick demise, and Elena and Nikolai at 4pm were brought outside the military barracks on Christmas Day 1989. The execution was performed by a firing squad of paratroopers, but hundreds of people had appealed to become one of those who shot the dictator and his wife. But as they were led up against the wall, Nikolai said, We could have been shot without having this masquerade. 
but Elena would be much stronger in her words. She screamed, you sons of dogs, as her arms were tied by four soldiers and she struggled, and she was forced outside the barrack wall with her husband. But Nikolai Ceausescu sang in his final moments, but Elena screamed. The executioners then quickly fired their weapons, so quick in fact that television cameras could not capture the whole of the execution, as the executioners littered the former dictator and his wife with their machine gun bullets. It was claimed that the pair had been struck by around 100 bullets. Elena Ceausescu, when she was executed against the side of the barrack building, was 73 years old, and she was the only woman to have ever been executed by the modern state of Romania. She was the most powerful woman across the land, and she wanted to be seen as a respected world leader, but alongside her husband, the pair ruined the nation. She was seen as a tyrant and a brutal woman who needed ousting out of power, and on Christmas Day 1989, she was executed in a brutal manner by members of the armed forces, who had once been loyal to her, but they were now loyal to the revolution. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.